Now, over the course of the game, you're going to want to utilize your farm system to better or to strengthen your major league team. To do that, we have two different kind of action cards that deal with the farm system. The first one we're going to talk about is Phenom to Majors. Now, obviously, this only comes into play if you have a Phenom in the minor leagues. If you don't have a Phenom, you might want to worry about Prospect to Phenom. But once you have a Phenom in the minor league system, he's ready to come up. Once per phase, action card, right? we can play a move to bring a Phenom up to the Majors. Now, what does that mean? It means you're going to roll the die. If you pick up the die, it's going to cost you some money. Cost you 500 bucks. Nothing is free in this game if you haven't figured that out. 500 bucks just to pick up the die. Now, because the designers of this game, i.e., my father and I, are notoriously bad dice rollers, and they exist, trust me, I can roll a one on this anytime I want. Because we're notoriously bad, we figured there's other notoriously bad die rollers, so we built in some mechanics to help those people out. If you have enough money, you can purchase DRMs. You can purchase die roll modifiers. You can buy up to a plus three. Every DRM costs $500. So if I wanted to roll the die with a plus three, it would cost me $2,000. Now the chart that you're looking at right now is the Phenom to Majors chart. As you can see, depending on how well or poorly you roll, different actions will take place. So for example, if I roll a five and I don't buy any DRMs, my Phenom becomes a regular. But that's not bad, I can cut down on my J rating doing that. But if I had purchased a plus three, you see that would have become an eight and my Phenom would have been an all-star. All-stars and superstars are money players. Money players are worth victory points and those are the kind of players you can combo ops with. Let's just say I roll really poorly. I rolled a one. Actually, I rolled a five, but let's say I rolled a one and I'm not happy with that. Well, it's good for me that my farm system has a lot of stars in it. I might have a five star farm system like I do in this example. I can roll up to five times, but if I pick up the die to roll again, I have to pay again. So this time I roll with a plus three and I roll an eight. Excellent for me. Eight plus three is 11. If you look at that chart, it only goes up to 10. Well, the reason for that is that other players can affect your die roll using their media cubes. If I roll pretty good and I have a strong team and I have a lot of victory points and a lot of wins, people might start attacking my die rolls. Every time they discard one of their media cubes, my die roll goes down. So let's say they knock it down to around a seven. Well, I don't want a regular, but I have a five-star farm system. I can try again, just spend more money. As I get more and more in-depth in rolling these dice, the more attempts I have, well, the better my chances of getting something good because other people's media might run out. On the fifth die roll, no matter what I roll, it is what it is. One. Ugh. Let's just say I rolled a five. And I had no pluses, no, no DRMs. So he's a regular. But my opponent says, well, Max, what I can do for you is I can use media to help you. And you might say, why would someone want to help you? Not because you're a, a lovable guy, but because they want something in return. Well, they might be able to get a good trade. I might trade them some regulars. I might trade them a couple phenoms. I might trade them $20,000 if I really want a money player. Those are things you can trade. We'll talk about that in a future video. More interactivity. Good stuff. But I wanted to show you the actual process of how you move around your player mats. So we're going to zoom in on our, our player mat right now. And you can see the way the, the board is set up. I have five regular players, 20 journeyman players in my major league team, and my farm system has a setup of four phenoms, five prospects, and six utility players. Let's just say I've rolled my die and I got 
high enough to get an all-star. Two things I have to do. I have to move my phenom from four to three because he is officially now in the major leagues. I also have to find my all-star chip and put it under the one. Well, my, my rosters are slightly imbalanced. Right now I have 26 in my major league team and only 14 in my minor league team. So what I have to do is I have to send somebody down to the minors. It's my choice. I'm going to pick journeyman. So are you. I'm going to move my journeyman down to 19. They become utility players. So that goes to seven. That's the way the process works. On a future turn, I might attempt to make a prospect into a phenom. If I'm successful, obviously the prospect goes down, the phenom goes back up. And you might have some stacking, and that's okay. If that happens, I usually just put the more important player on top, and you can tap them a little bit to the side so you can see somebody underneath. In the majors, it becomes a little more confusing if you have an all-star and a superstar. Sometimes I just stack them on top of each other just to show that I do have both. And that's how you utilize the grid to update your roster. As the game progresses, it's important to keep track of how your opponent's rosters are being made up. Because if you have an opponent that has an all-star, two superstars, and a handful of phenoms, that right there is a ton of victory points. And that opponent becomes a threat. We're going to talk in future videos on how you can attack that threat and some more interactivity with some of the other actions you can do coming up.